Welcome back to the food forest everybody. Now last year we installed a giant ecosystem pond. One of the problems that we had with the ecosystem pond is where are we going to put all the dirt that we dig out to make the actual pond. So what we ended up doing was basically just kind of pushing it down a hill and trying to kind of level that hill out a little bit because it was pretty steep. It was actually so steep that I couldn't get the riding lawnmower up the hill. So I wanted to kind of level that out. And that is basically what turned into Wildflower Hill. Now this was all soil that was like three feet under the ground. So it was junk soil and it was just placed on the hill. It was just bare soil. And if I didn't do anything with it, it would become pretty much a weed pit. So last year I made a video called something like sowing a forest, sowing some chaos, sowing a batch of chaos. And I sowed a ton of wildflower seed packets and a whole bunch of other stuff um, into what I call wildflower hill. And just kind of, this is like an experiment where we're gonna let nature take over and just see what happens. So one of the most um, frequent questions on my YouTube channel is, can you show me an update of Wildflower Hill? I don't know what it is about Wildflower Hill, but everybody kind of really enjoys it. And I think it's that whole, you know, it's like we're in kindergarten again and we're just doing this really fun experiment with plants and with nature and with bugs and pollinators and butterflies and just kind of see what happens. So today I'm gonna to take you on an update of Wildflower Hill. So without further ado, let's go see what it looks like today, one year later after we sowed a little bit of chaos into this. It is chaos, but it's chaos in a nice natural way.
to avoid the rain. I'm in the gazebo right now. I hope you can still hear me. And I wanted to talk a little bit about now that I'm slowly understanding more and more about how important that insect biome is. And I see the diversity that's on all those plants. It brings me joy, but it also brings my whole entire system, my food forest, my annual gardens, my pond, it brings them into balance. I've mentioned this before, but when we first got here, I had tremendous problems with coddling moth. We had tremendous problems with plum curculio. I had tons of cabbage moth. We had all sorts of pest problems, aphids on all of my garden plants. In fact, one year we basically got no tomatoes because the aphids just destroyed them all. And ever since I started gardening in this way and planting more plants, all those problems have basically disappeared. I will see the odd coddling moth in a pear or an apple, but it's 1% of my total yield is given to the coddling moth. And I consider that a price that I pay for balance. I either lose that 1% in that way, or I control that coddling moth because I don't like that it ate some apples, and then I create a whole host of other problems. I think that we really need to pull back from that human-centered view, the everything that I plant has to benefit me, and we need to incorporate some of our spaces into things that only benefit insects. And at the end of the day, if we want to eat healthy, nutritious food, that requires nutrient cycling. If we don't want to eat chemical-laden food that we spray with pesticides, then we need to allow some pests to exist because we need to establish predator populations on our land. If we can never get those predator populations established, then we'll always have pest problems. There's just no other way about it. At the end of the day, if we want to eat healthy, chemical-free food, we have to grow it inside a living ecosystem. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll see you on the next one.